Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the LEO New Moon webinar of the 2025 initiative. Today, we continue our work, shifting our focus to the Sustainable Development Goal to Zero Hunger. And our focalizers today, Tracy Arbor, Maria Cristina Donadieu, and Michael Stacy. Thank you for joining us today. Over to you, Rebecca. Thanks, Alexander. And as has become our custom, we take a moment to remember together what we are doing through these webinars. So we gather once a month at the new moon to focus on a shared vision for the common good that is expressed through the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We participate in group meditation on these formulated thought forms of solution that address the issues facing humanity and the planet at this time. And these SDG thought forms help to create physical conditions leading to the transformation and the elevation of human consciousness. Through our meditation, we energize and magnetize the vision to be radiatory and to reach as many people as possible in order that the sustainable development goals might manifest through many actions. We use the opportunity of these new moon cycles and the available astrological energies to distribute, radiate and anchor intention on the physical plane. As we sound together this note of this shared vision through our discussion, our presence, our meditation, we support the vibrant activation, consolidation and spread of the will to good throughout humanity. And over to Dot, who will continue our alignment. Thank you, Rebecca. In the naming circle, we are uniting hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into this group work together and as a group. In uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. So as we have become accustomed, what we will do now is our naming circle, calling ourselves fully present. And I will say the name and then please state your name and where you are calling in from. And then we will welcome you into the circle. So we'll start with staff and I'll go first. Dot Maver calling in from New Jersey, USA. Daniela. Hello, everyone. Daniela, I am calling from Belgium, Brussels in Belgium. Welcome, Daniela. Thank you. Maria Cristina. Maria Cristina Donadieu from the Arizona Sonora Desert on the border of the United States and Mexico. Welcome, Maria Cristina. Michael? Gracias. <laughs> Blessings, everyone. Michael Stacy calling in from Columbus, Ohio, in the USA. 
Welcome, Michael. Rebecca? Hello, everyone. Rebecca coming in from the Sunshine Coast of Queensland in Australia. Welcome, Rebecca. Tracy? Hi, Tracy Arbor coming in from Novi, Michigan. Welcome, Tracy. Alexander? Hi, uh, this is Alexander. I'm calling in from Brooklyn, New York in the United States. And now the list of attendees, Annette Ebbett. Good morning, calling in from the South Island, New Zealand. Mm, welcome, Annette. Annette Löffler. Hello, this is Annette Löffler from Denmark. Welcome, Annette. Avon. Well, oh, here she is. Avon Madison from San Francisco, United States of America. Welcome, Avon. Barbara. Welcome, Barbara. Barclay. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Barclay Milne in uh, Querétaro, Mexico. Welcome, Barclay. Beverly. Hello, this is Beverly Wood. I'm talking to you from my new home in Medford, Oregon. Mm. Welcome, Beverly. Bridget. Hello, everyone. This is Bridget Murphy calling from Toronto, Canada. Welcome, Welcome Bridget. Bridget. Karsten. <clears throat> yeah, Karsten Damke Jensen from Denmark. Welcome, Karsten. Thank you. Cheryl. Welcome, Cheryl. Christine. Christine Moore. Please unmute yourself, Christine. <clears throat> Welcome, Christine. Christine Thomas. Good morning, everyone. It's Chris Thomas from Sunshine Coast, Australia. Welcome, Chris. Claire. Hello, everyone. This is Claire from Dunedin, South Island, New Zealand. Welcome, Claire. Dacia. Hello everyone, this is Daisha Moss calling from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Welcome, Daisha. Deb. Uh, please unmute yourself, Deb. Welcome, Deb. Diana. Welcome, Diana. Eliza Maria. Eliza Mendonça from southeast of Brazil in Brazandi. Hello, everybody. Welcome, Eliza. Lawrence. Hello, everybody. Florence calling from France. Welcome, Florence. Francis. Please unmute yourself, Francis. Hello, everyone. Francis Gidet from Victoria, Canada. Welcome, Francis. Greta. Hello, everyone. I'm Greta Hartz from Denmark. Welcome, Greta. Jana. Welcome, Jana. Jeffrey. Hello, this is Jeffrey from uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota in the U.S. Welcome, Jeffrey. Julie. Please unmute yourself, Julie. 
Hello. 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 I'm calling from Lancashire in the United Kingdom, and this is Julie. Welcome, Julie. Karen Denman. Hi, this is Karen from Klamath Falls, Oregon, USA. Welcome, Karen. Karen Gritska. Karen's microphone is not active for some reason. Welcome, Karen. Marianne. House of Sweden. Welcome, Marianne. Thank you. Martha. Martha Gallagher. Hello, everyone from Weehawken, New Jersey, US. Welcome, Martha. Olga. Welcome, Olga. Paul Murphy. Hello, Paul Murphy, calling from England in the UK. Hello, everyone. Welcome, Paul. Paul O'Neill. Paul O'Neill, calling from Kansas City, USA. Welcome, Paul. Rebecca. Rebecca, please unmute yourself. Uh, Rebecca Dingle from Sagamore Hills, Ohio. With Karen Hill. Welcome, Rebecca and Karen. Richard. Welcome, Richard. Robin. If you called, this is Robin. If you called my name, I didn't hear you. This is Robin, um, the same as Paul O'Neill, speaking from Kansas City, Missouri, considered the heartland of the U.S. Welcome, Robin. Roswitha. Rosita, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Roswita. Sholen. Welcome, Sholen. Silvana. Welcome, Silvana. Tina. Hello, this is Tina Hutchings from Castle Rock, Colorado. Welcome, Tina. And over to you, Michael. As we have become linked together in the naming circle, let us come and report with and as the group soul. We hold this thought and image in our mind. We learn to work with this group mind in unity and not necessarily in uniformity as a receiver of impressions of the divine plan so that our personalities become instruments of service in manifesting our part of that plan. Based on the beginning time of the webinar and the location of the UN headquarters in New York, the ascendant for this event is at 16 degrees of Scorpio. From the Sabian symbols in astrology by Mark Jones, the symbol is a girl's face breaking into a smile. He writes, quote, this is a symbol of the need to share any true essence of selfhood 
as here brought to an immediate actuality in everyday living. No ultimate values can be cloistered forever in the depths of self. And implicit in the symbolism is the gregarious nature of the human soul, as revealed in the naive friendliness it shows for all other creatures. Here is a magic of personality by which any desired reality may be conjured into being. The key word is acquiescence. When positive, this degree is man's ingratiating gift for employing the simple things of life for surmounting any momentary obstacles to his self-fulfillment." Let us hold this image of the smiles that result when hunger has been satisfied. The purpose and goal for this SDG is to end physical hunger achieve food security and improved nutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture. Each nation of the world is responsible to create and provide the necessary planning and funding to meet their part of this objective. On a worldwide scale, this goal seeks to address a part of the basic physiological needs, as well as some safety needs shown on the bottom two levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. In this psychological model, the four lower levels are considered as deficiency needs, while the top level is called the growth or being needs. This SDG forms a part of the foundation needed to achieve the psychological needs of belongingness and love. and esteem shown in the middle levels of the triangle. Maslow thought that people are able to move up the hierarchy toward self-actualization as needs on the lower levels are being met to some degree. But generally, people will move back and forth between different types of needs. The human body needs the physiological needs met to function at its best. And so these needs are thought of as a great motivator. To meet the overall 2030 goal for this SDG, there are certain targets. These include ending hunger and ensuring access to safe, nutritious, and sufficient food ending all forms of malnutrition, doubling agricultural productivity and income, ensuring sustainable food production systems, and implementing resilient agricultural practices. Maintaining the genetic diversity of seeds, cultivated plants, and domesticated animals. Increasing investment in rural infrastructure, agricultural research and extension services, and plant and livestock gene banks. And finally, adopting measures to ensure the proper functioning of food commodity markets. Each of these targets constitute a worthwhile means for providing a solid foundation through which human consciousness can be raised globally. The 2018 Goals Report describes some of the worldwide challenges faced in the remaining period until 2030. For instance, the number of undernourished rose to 815 million in 2016. 
In 2017, 151 million children suffered from stunting, 51 million from wasting, and 38 million were overweight. In developing countries, aid to agricultural fell to 6% of donors' sector allocable aid from 20% in the mid-1990s. Market distorting subsidies declined to 200 million in 2015. SDG 3, promoting good health, increases the pressure on food security by reducing mortality rates, which tends to increase global population growth. Many of the improving health targets included in this goal are directed at developing countries, which generally have the highest birth and poverty rates. Looking at SDG 6, it promotes clean water and sanitation and is impacted by SDG, SDG 2 as more food producers locate where irrigation is necessary, reducing water availability for human consumption. The human population of this planet is now over 7 billion and is projected to reach 8.551 billion by 2030, the target year for these SDGs. The annual growth rate has been slowing from its peak of 2% in the late 1960s to about 1.07% today. Yet the Tibetan master recognized the unsustainability of this large human population, stating, quote, the economic situation and the necessity to provide for the unduly large population of the planet lies behind much of the aggression and greed of the nations down the ages, and for the effort being made today as never before to provide better and more adequate living conditions. War has consequently been the inevitable result of this undue and unlimited propagation of the human species." Unquote. Around that time, the world population had just reached 2 billion people. Comparing extremes, Mali, a landlocked country in West Africa, has a population of 19.7 million, a median age of 16, and a fertility rate of 5.9. Both Japan and Italy, with populations of 126.8 million and 59.2 million respectively, both have a median age of 48 and fertility rates of 1.5. This target recognizes the role that small-scale food producers have in promoting food production across the world, while facing greater constraints in accessing land, other productive resources and inputs, knowledge, financial services, markets, and opportunities. In this regard, strengthening the resilience and adaptive capacity of small-scale food producers is critical to reversing the trend of rising hunger and reducing the share of people living in extreme poverty. The Food and Agricultural Organization for the UN estimates that there are about 570 million farms worldwide, with the vast majority being small. In some countries, small-scale food producers account for up to 85% of the total. Due to a number of factors, there is limited data available for comparisons. However, in all countries, the labor productivity of small-scale producers is lower than large-scale producers. In addition, the incomes of small-scale producers are generally less than half that of large-scale producers. However, using the U.S. as an example, the primary trend has been toward large-scale farming with the number of small specialty farms also growing. The total number of farms have reached their lowest level since the Great Depression that drove people into the country where they could survive by growing their own food. During the 1930s, even with their concerns over job security, 
my maternal grandparents did purchase land outside the city for that purpose. Those on my father's side have always been farmers. The number of farms exceeding 2,000 acres now exceeds 85,000, as shown on that bottom line of the chart. In the U.S., the average value of land is almost $3,000 per acre, and an average cost over $133,000 for equipment per farm shows why there is a shift towards the mega farm. As the cost of labor rises, farms become more mechanized. The mechanization needed for various farm sizes is quite similar. Examples of the rise in mega farms include Bridgewater Dairy in Northwest Ohio, which milks 3,000 cows in its 24 hour per day operation. And Fair Oaks Farms in Indiana, southeast of Chicago, houses 30,000 dairy cows in 10 barns. When my father returned from the war in 1946, my parents purchased a dairy farm in Northwest Ohio, in the same county as the family farm, where my dad was born in a log cabin. The farm they purchased did not provide enough income to feed both the family and the animals. Like many farmers, he had other employment to make ends meet. This speaks to the demise of the family farm in the U.S., due in part to the cost of land and equipment, an aging farmer population, the need for supplemental income, the financial inability to transfer farm assets to younger generations, the loss of arable land to development, and changing weather patterns, to name just a few. To maximize crop production and hence income, Often unsustainable methods are used for short-term benefits, such as the heavy use of herbicides and petroleum-based fertilizers, and not allowing the land to rest. There is an increasing use of genetically modified seeds and increasingly limited water resources. What can we do individually and as a group? Change begins through the magical process governed by the laws of thought. A few suggestions include, express gratitude to the small local producers in our thoughts and patronize those producers. Think about what we eat and change our diets to reduce consumption of beef and lamb products. Think about the sources of our food and eat more locally. Reduce food waste both in our homes and when eating at restaurants. Be an example to others. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, this is Tracy Arbor, and uh, I'd like to thank Michael, first of all, for his very informative insights at the physical level. And I'm going to go ahead and pull my screen up. Um, I'd like to now move us from feeding the physical aspect of our being uh, into the subtle realms that also need to be fed to achieve the goal of zero hunger. The constellation Leo in this new moon is a reminder of our royal heritage. Remembering who we are is the next step in our human evolution. By becoming self-aware, we begin to move forward consciously, directing our thoughts and actions towards uniting our lower nature or personality with our higher nature or soul. The process by which this is achieved is known as psychosynthesis. Psychosynthesis is the keynote for Leo, as well as the antidote to spiritual hunger. Gospels refer to this as the return of the prodigal son to his father's house. It is a returning home, home being the heavenly homeland, not as we were before, but now enriched by the experience of self-awareness, which has come to maturity through the toil and conflicts we've undergone through multiple lifetimes. Psychosynthesis is the culmination and crowning achievement of man and also opens the door into the fifth kingdom. Remembering that average man stands at the fulcrum in the fourth kingdom, with the animal, plant, and mineral kingdoms below him. But once we become soul-infused, 
we then begin to enter the fifth kingdom, which is also known as the human spiritual kingdom. In order to achieve psychosynthesis, we need to establish our consciousness about a higher point than that of average man. To do this, we have to break our links with the collective unconscious and construct our own personal bridge that will link our lower mind or intellect to our higher or abstract mind. This can be a very daunting task since we have to elevate ourselves out of our emotions and desires and live mindfully in the presence of detachment. In other words, we have to learn to live as an observer and not become attached to or emotionally involved with the material world and its maya or illusion. Psychosynthesis requires us to build our own personal bridge which will link our lower mind to our higher mind. To create this bridge, a spiritual organelle needs to be constructed that will allow us access into the higher realm of the abstract mind. This organelle is known as the Antakarana or Rainbow Bridge, and it is constructed through our hard effort in the practice of three disciplines, each practiced equally. First, meditation, then the reading, the occult classics, which helps build our abstract mind, and service to mankind and that would be selfless service. As we continue these practices, the gap between the lower personality and soul closes, allowing more energy to flow back and forth between them until finally the soul completely infuses itself into the personality. Symbolically, we'll see this as the six-pointed star or the Star of David. Mankind is involved in a dual evolution the evolution of the soul and that of its lower nature, the personality. So basically the goal here is to go from my will be done to thy will be done, where the will of the personality is completely surrendered to that of the soul. To continue the progress towards psychosynthesis, we need to uh, move our energies from the chakras below our diaphragm upwards to feed the chakras above the diaphragm. Leo's heart-centered qualities such as compassion, courage, generosity, and love are the virtues we should be consciously applying in our daily life to help move these energies upward. The soul receives high-frequency energy from its monadic source, and then it transmutes and transmits that flow of, that, of those energies downward into the personality but only according to what its personality is prepared to receive. The ancients called this energy fire. So the more we're able to receive and outwardly express this fire, the more our soul can increase the amount of fire it feeds us. So how does the soul feed us this energy? Well, it feeds us through symbols, images, and dreams, all of which are laden with energy. These energies provide quality and meaning, as well as offering balance between our inner and outer worlds. So here's the question I propose to you. How well equipped are you in the variety of symbols and images your soul can use to feed you? To increase the variety and, image, and the number of images and symbols in your life, Expose yourself more to the arts, poetry, myths, and even travel. The soul's language and the language of the fifth kingdom is that of images and symbols. We really need to step up our game so we can receive the maximum benefit on this playing field. Also, we need to also be aware that the images and symbols may have different meanings to you than it does to someone else. But your soul knows and it will use what is meaningful to you personally. We also receive energy from the symbols, images, and myths that are shared through the collective unconscious of mankind. As for dreams, well, they not only feed us through the images and symbols they use, but they also provide a means for the energies of our inner and outer world to achieve balance. Just the fact alone that the average person spends one third of their life in the sleep state emphasizes the importance of dreaming, even if we don't consciously remember our dreams. 
So try and become consciously aware and active in your relationship with the images and symbols you encounter in your daily life, as well as those that come to you, like while you're daydreaming or in different stages of sleep, uh, as you're falling asleep, while you're dreaming, and as you're awakening. Assess their effect on you and your response to them both mentally and emotionally. This conscious and self-aware process will establish a co-creative partnership between you and your soul, as well as stimulating both evolutions simultaneously. Coming from the nucleus or core teaching, teachings that are given to us by the Chohans, who are the Venusians that help our earth chains and humanity with their evolution, we receive the three truths and are instructed to feed the spiritually hungry with them. First, the soul of man is immortal and its future is the future of a thing whose growth and splendor have no limit. Second, the principle which gives life dwells in us and without us, is undying and eternally beneficent, is not heard or seen or felt, but is perceived by the man who desires perception. And third, each man is his own absolute lawgiver, the dispenser of glory or gloom to himself, the decreer of his life, his reward, his punishment. And finally, in conclusion, I'd like to share a mantra written by Dr. Roberto Esagioli, who was a psychiatrist and also the founder of the psychological movement Psychosynthesis. He recommended this mantra be recited at the beginning and end of each day to remind us of who we truly are. More radiant than the sun, purer than the snow, subtler than the ether is the self, the spirit within my heart. I am that self, that self am I. Thank you. Maria Cristina will now lead us into our meditation for the Leo New Moon. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much, Tracy and mm -hmm. Michael. And we continue our work together, cognizant of our identity as souls, our attention, our consciousness identified with the higher self, the soul in its own plane, a group conscious entity. And as we become conscious of this interlocking rapport, once again, heart to heart, mind to mind, embedded within the greater soul of humanity, let us sound the first stanza of the great invocation. Could you put that up? Let the forces of light bring illumination to humanity. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May men and women of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. We are in a time of preparation at this time for the upcoming festival week of the new group of world servers. Last month, the eclipse during the full moon of Cancer solar festival only heightened its stance with its polar opposing sign of Capricorn. Very aware of the dance between opposing signs, the magical and magnetic interplay. And as aspiring disciples were cold called to hold at the balancing point between the two energies of poise of opposing signs a relationship qualified by gemini an evolving relationship meant to be qualified by love and we are called to hold to this central point as we mount the fixed cross of discipleship and there to stand Today, at the new moon of Leo, we are working within one of the arms of the fixed cross in close relationship with Aquarius. 
the interplay between the individual and the group, between, as is popularly expressed, I love it, unity in diversity. And so we hold at that balancing point, deepening heart of Leo, aligning with the head of Aquarius, holding within humanity, embedded within humanity, gathering the aspiration of humanity as we work, deepening the ability to know ourselves and consciously cooperate with the greater whole within the group sign of Aquarius. The sustainable development goals present the quarry stone for the building of a new global community reflective of the group conscious soul of humanity itself. The goals represent a flowering of the petals of the causal body of humanity, of the soul of humanity. And so today we gather celebrating and enlivening these goals as we enter into meditation together as a group using increasingly a magnetic group rapport, engendering a magnetic group aura as we sound the words, I am one with my group brothers and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is my soul pour forth to them. May the strength which is in each one of us lift and aid each other. May the thoughts which our soul creates reach and encourage each other. Again, recognizing our place within the heart center of the new group of world servers. We visualize a lighted line of energy, a rainbow bridge linking the spiritual hierarchy and the planetary heart center, Christ at its very heart, the heart of love. Extending, orienting ourselves towards Shambhala where the will of God is known, Sanat Kumara, at the heart of Shambhala. The three planetary centers coming into increasing alignment, interplay, relationship. And we hold the mind focused for a few moments on the planetary role of the new group of world servers mediating between hierarchy and humanity, responding to hierarchical impression and meditating the plan into existence. Reflecting on the seed thought, strengthening and giving life to the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. The nations united through a united vision. Bringing increased livingness to the goals focusing on zero hunger on all its levels.
the great quality of the first ray found in Leo is the great sacrifice. And forgiveness characterizes the first ray, a giving for the open hand. Creating a circulatory flow. Through proper agricultural practices and the consequent flow of distribution. Precipitation. We visualize the precipitation of the will to good, essential love throughout the planet, the giving hand, the circulatory flow from Shambhala, Sanat Kumara at the heart. Ray Mediated through hierarchy, Christ at the heart of hierarchy, and through the new group of world servers, bridging through the rainbow bridge flowing through to all men and women of goodwill everywhere in the world. And finally, through the hearts and minds of the whole human family, and we consider the ways in which the power of the one life, the love of the one soul are working out, serving groups and individuals throughout the nations of the world. Members of the new group of world servers building the thought form of solution fulfilling the creative aspect of the planetary center humanity. Distribution as we sound the great invocation, visualizing the irradiation of human consciousness with light and love and power.
from the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May the coming one, the Christ, the Bodhisattva, the Iman Mahdi, the Lord Maitreya, return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills. Let purpose guide humanity, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call humanity, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Thank you. And now we come to a time of sharing our impressions, our thoughts, our hearts, which can be done as I think most know. Um, by either clicking on the icon with, of the little hand or writing in the chat box. Thank you, Maria Cristina. That was beautiful meditation. So much was shared, but there was one in particular. I'm going to, even as we speak, see if I can find a quote. I don't know if you have it at hand, Bev, but the word acquiescence was mentioned. And as I recall, in the reappearance of the Christ, the power of acquiescence, together with a great expectancy, provides a um, doorway, an opening up, a clearing. It just strengthens the influx between humanity and hierarchy. I'm going to see if I can find that quote.
this is Dot. I'd like to thank Michael and Tracy. The combination of those sharings was really in the spirit of thought form building as solutionaries and really touches the essence of the reality that we need to come to terms with our spiritual hunger uh, that in turn feeds then our physical hunger and the way through. So thank you. It was a beautiful uh, expression of the Leo energies as well. Yeah, and just adding to that, um, one of the things that really struck me in relation to the goal is that um, interplay between the personality and the soul and between our inner and outer work and the heart, second ray nature of Leo um, and, and the need for us to really give you know, on a physical level for this, for the solution of the physical hunger that's involved in this goal and how that actually comes from our soul qualities, that, that will and the, the love and the um, willingness to, to give um, that's needed on the part of humanity to bring about the loving distribution of resources that will um, satiate the physical hunger. I'd like to share something. Is that okay? This is... Of course. Absolutely. Please, please do. Please do. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So this is Rebecca and Sagamore Hills with Karen. And uh, one of the things that strikes me about what we're doing here today, which is so beautiful, is we know that the issue with world hunger, it basically, from what I've read, is tied up in, in, in economics and greed and you know all that kind of stuff. So to approach it not to be ignorant of, of, of that side of it, but with the almost like the top down approach of connecting with our souls and getting the vision and the image and the felt sense of the smiling face, faces of people who are satiated, not you know physically, which is the goal here, but also you know spiritually as well. But but the whole top down approach is is so beautiful and it seems like to try to fight it through, you know, tr trying to change economic policy, I think that's going to be, I think that's kind of a self-destructing thing that's happening on its own. And so that the constructive work that 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 you are, are all providing and that we're helping to sustain through our participation is really beautiful. And I, I, I'm very grateful to be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you. Alexander, I wonder if you'll address Karsten's question about sharing the PowerPoints. Uh, yes. Um, if our speakers don't mind, uh, we can put the PowerPoints into the handout section so that they would be available. And it's one okay with me. Yeah, that's fine with me too. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I will upload the presentations now in handouts, and so you oh, will be. Oh, I just to found it. the quote. I just found the quote on acquiescence, which I would love to share because it has to do with happiness, and that Christ will teach men how to handle happiness correctly, 
to overcome the ancient habits of misery and to know the true joy, to know true joy. Factors in this is submission and acquiescence. Is that not interesting? Submission and acquiescence. acquiescence. Hmm. To accept with enthusiasm and understanding life as it is and the opportunity offered to us today. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Cristina. If anyone would like to share any other thoughts, um, many of uh, people in the audience are self-muted uh, as we were going through the uh, naming circle. Uh, those who, of you who muted yourself, you stay that way and only few that I had to mute. So please feel free to step in any moment and if you have muted by an organizer just raise your hand uh, it's a function on the control panel and we will unmute you and the presentations are now in the handout section uh, christine please unmute yourself Hello, fellow travelers. I have been in reverie here. I could give statistics. I do a lot of that. But one that I feel is most important right now is that during this cycle on July 13th, all timelines have merged. What does that mean? That means the past no longer affects us. We can be in the present and we can go towards the future that we create. Thank you. Scott, could you remind us of the moment of silence to be held at the time of the Capricorn Festival? Yes, happy to, Maria Cristina. Uh, the Solstice Silent Minute, inspired by the Silent Minute uh, from 1940 to 1944, when Big Ben would chime at 9 p.m. and Brits everywhere, land, air, and sea would hold a moment of silence, and it was attributed to helping to end that world war and secure peace and freedom uh, by opening the door to the other side so that all of us, this side and the other, could work together in unit of consciousness. And on December solstice, December 21st at 9 p.m. GMT, uh, we will hold a unified, exact moment, wherever we are on the planet, minute of silence uh, in the spirit of peace, uh, calling for peace and freedom. And we're encouraging everyone to ring a bell uh, just prior to 9 p.m. GMT and then hold that minute of silence together. It is also the first day of the New Group of World Service Festival Week, so it provides an opening moment where we create a chalice, if you will, uh, the chalice said to be the symbol of peace in our time. Uh, Wellesley Tudor Pohl, founder of the original Silent Minute, uh, spoke of the uh, cup of peace. And so we create this chalice together, and it has the potential to be quite a transformative moment, which also answers the call uh, for the world servers to come together in a uh, unified manner simultaneously. 
uh, to receive and then radiate uh, the extraplanetary energies. And thanks for asking. Thank you. Alexander, maybe we can put the silent minute flyer on the handouts also. Yes, absolutely. So this is Martha, and I want to express great gratitude to the three presenters. There was a seamlessness about your presentation that uh, created a convergence of understanding for me. And when that happens, it offers all of us an opportunity to become whatever energy is being shared at the moment. So while we were devoted to the particular Sustainable Development Goal 2, I would like to ask each of the presenters if they could share with us, if they were comfortable in doing so, what happened to them? Did, what changes did they notice in them or levels of awareness did they notice when they were preparing this particular webinar? <laughs> It truly was extraordinary, and I thought perhaps if you could share the impact it had on you, it helped strengthen our uh, response to what you put out for us. Thank you. Maybe we could go in order of presentation, Michael. I was just thinking that I could begin, so yes. Um, coming from, uh, in this carnation, incarnation anyway, a family um, born and raised on a farm. And so um, the plight of farmers is something uh, which I find quite important because it's the producers that make it possible for all of us to, to feed our physical forms so that we can then feed our spiritual lives. It was quite disconcerting perhaps to find that the number of family farms was has been declining so drastically and taken over by these large industrial organizations and farming um, conglomerates um, and the the methods that are used in order to um, to create additional food for for all of us to eat. Um, one also needs to remember that much of the farming output, uh, for instance, corn goes into uh, creating food for livestock, uh, for cows for milk and, uh, and cattle for beef and pigs for, you know, bacon and all that sort of thing. Uh, corn is grown for corn syrup, which goes into so many food products. Corn is is grown to uh, create biofuels. And so many, many farming products are used uh, outside of human consumption. And so that in, in one way that's that's calling for a 
a need for us to think about uh, what we are eating, how we are living, and how we are interacting in the world itself. Um, it was also interesting to see that the rise of small farms of 10 acres or less is growing, and that is due to uh, specialty farms, uh, which I found quite interesting. And then there was in um, researching the Sabian symbol for the start of this particular webinar uh, and the smile. And I thought of how my wife, when we uh, worked at the free produce markets, it was my wife's job to make sure that everyone had a smile on their face as they went through the line. And thank you, Maria Christina, for the thing on acquiescence, which is the keynote for the Sabian symbol. Thank you, Michael. That was really, really good. Your presentation was wonderful, and I thank everybody for contributing and being a part of this. Um, I don't know, I think as I was going through trying to uh, bring about what I felt was zero hunger uh, to me was more at the spiritual level, although we have to be aware of what we're doing on our physical level also. So I think, um, I think the, the word here would be self-awareness on all levels. And, uh, you know, as Michael suggested, we need to become aware of like what we're eating, where we're getting it from, how we're eating, and that type of thing. And uh, that's really, very important on the physical level, I think, at least, in, you know, I agree with Michael on that. And um, as far as becoming self-aware on other levels, you know, it's uh, not hungering or thirsting for emotions or, um, you know, desires, that type of thing, and really becoming aware of our thoughts, uh, because whatever the impressions are that we're bringing in, uh, precipitate down into the physical aspect of how we live and uh, how we relate to each other. So if we know we're all coming from one place and as our group is aware, we're all uh, trying to uh, evolve humanity into its next, next level, um, we need to be very careful of how we use the energy that we're quote unquote feeding on and uh, also giving out. So uh, that's kind of where I was, I don't know, motivated to speak about uh, the subtler levels of receiving the energies that feed us and what we feed out and the interplay between uh, the higher self and the lower self. So that's where I was coming from. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. It was a beautiful presentation. And then I came in, um, and I've been focusing a lot on the entirety of the Great Invocation. The Great Invocations should have an S on the end. Um, and there's a line in there calling for the souls of men to awaken to the light and may we stand with mast intent. It says may they stand, but may we stand with mast intent. And increasingly, um, it's like we're so challenged. So is our definition of being of service. And it seems at this time that we are all called upon to be alert, to stand, to hold the vigil to increasing light. Because the Tibetan does mention under light that we need to be able to recognize that light and use it because it will not be light as um, 
we have previously conceived it. Now, I, and I would guess this is true for everyone, no matter what their stage of taking the next step might be. But recognizing our place, um, we who are gathered here, and holding that at the heart of the Ajna Center of Humanity. The Ajna Center is a new group of world servers of humanity. And standing within that heart, because here we are embedded in humanity, you know, running to Costco or whatever. And yet it's almost like being a lightning rod um, that we hold because Everyone knows that we're at an initiatory transformative point. The agriculture is one aspect. And it's amazing. I mean, eating asparagus is, is very bad for our planet because of the costs to bring it over in the airplanes. <laughs> so there is this whole, you know, eat locally does have merit in that way and it's just looking at these centers of distribution but i think rather than just and it has to be very specific um ways to address things like vegetarianism which is new to our culture but is not you know comfortable these days it's offered everywhere there's much goodness that has been happening and I think we really need to be cognizant of, that the, that many people everywhere really are aspiring, even if they know not. And that that is, that in itself is a very creative act that we can help to focalize and that it is contributing to the building of the egoic body, the causal body, our soul bodies, you know, the karana sarina, but not just of ourselves, of humanity itself. And indeed, uh, the Tibetan does give us the petals even for the egoic body of humanity, which I had open just a second ago. And in Education in New Age, where he talks about the knowledge petals, the love petals, the will and sacrifice petals of humanity. And I would say that we group love, by the way, group love, and we're working on the second tier of petals of humanity because even hierarchy is part of that egoic lotus. So that's where I ended up with all of this work and with these, this wonderful vision that humanity has anchored in these goals, the sustainable development goals. I would like to pick up a thread about the preparation for this specific webinar and um, every time a triangle of focalizers prepare, we have a, a meeting where uh, they share their thoughts to come into some sorts of alignment. And so at that meeting, we also talk about the structure of the webinar and how things happen. And um, so uh, at some point, Michael asked uh, uh, the coordination triangle, what is this alignment? as he was asked if he would lead uh, the alignment and it was a very interesting question because it's something that we take as kind of for granted like, but it was good to share it in a group uh, um, with the group and as we talked it there were, it came a deeper realization of what is the nature of the alignment that happens at the beginning of each webinar and that beautiful uh, introduction that that uh, presented today was a result of that group reflection and realization that every time we come together on the webinar we link it together through distance creating etheric chalice of the group and that's the act of creative imagination that we collectively involved into 
it's it's a magical process of creating that group field that it's much more habitual on the physical plane when we meet with our actual groups in this one room we can sense that etherical chalice of the group that we create but creating etherical chalice in, in through the distance it's something still very new and we all learn through the experiment of doing that and every time we come at the beginning of the webinar we aligning with each other imagining being together connected through the heart center of the group it's the act of will that we as a group align coming to work in meditation for humanity and i think it was especially beautiful because we are now in the under the sign of leo and that's the note of individualization and applies in a way to the group of world service and to us as, as a terrorist the, that part of the uh, larger uh, world group is that realization of us as being one group united working together and it's it's definitely a shift in perception of the group identity that is happening and that we're experiencing now especially as we prepare for the festival week of the world service group later this year in december so that's something i wanted to share what is special about this webinar on the design of Leo. Thank you. We have a comment from Karen Gritska, I appreciate that you used Maslow's hierarchy of needs to show how we need to meet the basic needs of all people before we as humanity can move forward and develop self-actualization. What I find fascinating is we often in this work have talked about the subjective nature of the work that we do, especially for many years um, scattered around the globe. You might be meditating by yourself, but you connect with the subjective group. And sometimes we are fortunate to have an objective group and all meet together and exchange the air we breathe and even though challenged at times by group personality anchoring the group soul so we have the objective and the subjective but now we have the virtual and that brings a whole nother dimension and i guess it's etheric would that be the etheric without the physical I find it a fascinating uh, development. Yes, it's almost like it's a, um, um, a, a middle phase having these these virtual <laughs> um coming together it's it's like um uh, some some level of antakarana linking us um from you know from through the through the virtual into the etheric from the physical it's true yeah for which i am very grateful yes Likewise, 
I think now we're getting close to the end of yeah. the webinar and I, I want to ask you, Rebecca, if you could share about the coming webinars and yes. uh, opportunity to for service. Yes, can I have that slide? Yes. Okay, so um, we've just been hearing um, about the richness of what happened in our pre-webinar meeting this month um, and, you know, many observations about the, the richness and the, the um, integration and seamlessness of what's come about this month. And that's come about just from people volunteering and being invited to um, fulfill this role of focalizing. And I'd just like to emphasize that um, this role is open to everyone. Um, and as we've um, strengthened this alignment today and the chalice and everything, I hope that everyone can feel the welcome that is in the chalice of this group now and um, the safety and the support that's here for, for all of us to contribute in whatever way that we can. So there's no need to be an expert on any of these topics. It's about, it's a true act of service and it's about bringing ourselves um, forward and offering what we can in service of these goals and of this work together. So you can see on the screen here, <coughs> um, we're, we're actually seeking some more um, focalizers for the webinars, for the triangles of focalizers. The most immediate one is for life on land in Sagittarius, <coughs> um, around the new moon of Sagittarius. We're still seeking one more person to help us with that webinar. Um, and then all the other um, goals that we're seeking focalizers for are into the new year. So you have plenty of time to prepare for that if you should volunteer for that. Um, and just offering the thought that is present um, in group minds at the moment that the new year will be continuing and actioning the energy that we will be bringing in during World Service Week. And so it's it's a time, you know, it's starting the distribution of that energy. So this is a beautiful time to offer your energies into the group work. So um, there's a few more minutes of the webinar if you feel like you would like to um, offer to help focalize any of these goals, please um, type your email into the chat box or you can email us <coughs> Um, at the 2025 initiative and you'll have that email in your um, email address in your emails from us sending out um, the notices but this is it online here. Um, and is the next slide there to Alexander? Um, just about the um, recordings. Um, in, we will be as you know, we send out a um, invitation for feedback after the webinar and many people have been asking as part of that, where can I access the, the recording of the webinar? Um, and we do have a YouTube ch channel and Alexander has placed that address in the chat box also if you wanted to copy it now. Um, and yes, just look for the playlist section to find the most recent webinar. Um, and you can also find an archive of older webinars um, on, on the 2025 website. If you just Google 2025 initiative, the um, new moon webinars are under the cycles tab on that, on that website. So, please, we hope you'll be able to now um, find what you've been looking for and asking for in being able to review some of the webinars. And um, yeah, just deep thanks today for the, for the beautiful sharing and 
energy that's come through in alignment. And uh, do we have a f the final slide there, Alexander, as we come into closing? Yes, it's coming. Yeah, so as we um, get ready to go our ways and um, carry this energy with us into the world, uh, just coming into silence and stillness, drinking in and grounding what's happened here today. As we prepare to distribute these energies as we move out into our lives in the world. And may the spirit of peace be spread abroad in our hearts, through our groups and throughout the world. Deep gratitude and thanks everybody.